Hello and welcome to the final lab of your CAM 102. Congratulations if you've made it this far. Um, this is also my favorite lab. Um, we're going to be doing electrochemical cells. It's lab number 24. So here we have five beakers. Each of them is labeled with the name of a corresponding solution. We have copper gluconate, we have tin sulfate, ferrous sulfate, aluminium sulfate, and zinc sulfate over there. We also have the five corresponding metals. So set them up so that you have easy access to each of them. And make sure you label each of the five um, beakers with the corresponding metal solution. Once you've got those named, set up, you're going to need another one. Um, this is going to be potassium chloride. So I'm sure in your kit that you're going to have about 25 milliliters for each of the liquids or the fluids that you're going to use. Um, if not, you can eyeball it. It says to use a graduated cylinder. If there's much variation in your kit, please do use it. But I'm not going to. I'm just going to use what is in each of the provided containers because I know it's in or around the 25 milliliters. Okay, so let's move on. Over here we have our stationery department um, with sandpaper. We've got the sandpaper, we've got our permanent marker, you'll need that to mark the containers. We have the scissors and we have filter paper, quite a lot of filter paper. We also have our ruler. So we're going to put these over here. We're going to work on this first with the potassium chloride. And over here we have our digital multimeter which we will come to in a few moments. So first over to our potassium chloride. This is going to um, be the solution that we're using for the salt bridge. So let's get those salt bridges ready to go. What you're going to do is take a piece of filter paper, give you quite a lot, just take one piece of filter paper, you're going to make five salt bridges. Um, just by cutting a 2 by 15 centimeter uh, strip of paper, or strips of paper, we're going to just roll them up and then put them into this beaker with the potassium chloride. Give it a few minutes just to soak up and that's our salt bridge ready to go. So I'll go ahead and do that and see you in a minute. Okay, you may have noticed that I folded the paper in half and I ended up getting 10 of these strips. Um, a thicker salt bridge doesn't really make much of a difference. I like to use a double one, so I'm going to be using two pieces of paper for each salt bridge. So I'm going to shake up the potassium chloride, pour it in to the beaker, and then I'm going to follow that with the strips. Just make sure they're fully soaked as much as possible. Okay, so that's that. Next up, we're going to put each of the um, metal solutions into their corresponding beaker. So you will have labeled each of these so we've got our copper gluconate, just mixing it around a little. You see a lot of them will have the precipitate at the bottom, um, so we're going to just shake them up a bit. our copper gluconate and our tin sulfate. Okay, so we're going to concentrate on these two first. 
our copper gluconate and our tin sulfate. Put these aside. Copper gluconate, tin sulfate, we have our copper metal strip and we have our tin metal strip. So these are going to be our focus. Now you might see, I don't know what yours are going to look like, obviously, but you'll see possibly some oxidation um, on each of these. This is where our sandpaper comes in. Just take a little piece of sandpaper. And you're going to sand, just lightly sand, so you can get rid of that oxidation layer. metals, those letters up at the top tell you what the element is. I realized that my iron was actually in a, the tin container and my tin was in the iron one. So I'm just going to swap those around. SN for tin, Cu for copper, copper gluconate, tin sulfate. So just keep your eyes open. All right, over here we have our digital multimeter. We're going to turn it on and off here. Okay, the dial that we're going to be using or the uh, setting that we're going to be using is DC voltage. We're going to go to 2000 millivolts. So that will read as um, 2000 millivolt. We're going to put the black Is brand new. Okay, so black goes into the COM port and red goes into the um, volt ohm milliamp above it. Turn it on. Should settle at zero. So you're just checking to see if all's well and it is in this case, so we'll just turn it off again. Leave those ready to go. Our black is always going to go into the copper. Um, the black is negative. The red is going to go into the tin, always positive. So red to tin, black to copper. Now, we need to put the metals into each of these and we also need to have a contact. Um, the procedure, that's in the lab manual, says to put the metal in first and then to put the contact on. But I found that unless you have the, the dog clips, um, the sprung clips, that you can clip onto the cathode and the anode, it doesn't really give as good a contact. So to ensure that we get a good contact, I'm just going to tape it across like this. Tape the electrode across the top of the beaker like this so that we can rest the metal up against here. It'll give us the most amount of contact possible. Let's just do that now. Okay, <clears throat> as you can see, both of them are connected. They're not leaning against anything. They're definitely not in any of the fluid. So now I have the two pieces of metal ready to go. The thing I need to do first is to put the salt bridge stemming from one to the other. Again, you don't want any contact on this. So I'm going to move the wires just a little bit, change the angles a touch. I want them to be able to have a nice enough bridge. These salt bridges are well soaked. Again, I'm just going to use two of them. They're stuck together. Okay, we have a nice contact between them. Now we're going to take our tin place it in there. 
Again, you don't want to touch the salt bridge. And our copper. Okay, now we see that the multimeter has settled in. That didn't take long at all. Um, this is our typical cell setup that you're going to be using for different combinations of metals. Um, you have the table there that you can just follow the table. Um, make sure you do every combination and take a photograph of the cell setup. Like I said, it's the same setup as we have here, um, but you're going to do it for all the different combinations as prescribed. Make sure you take into consideration that we are at the 200 millivolt um, setting. Uh, when you're doing your calculations, understand the, what the number you're looking at actually means and also that um, the flow from anode to cathode. Okay, well that's the end of our kitchen lab series for CHEM 102. Um, I've had a lot of fun doing it and I hope that you've survived it and had fun too at times. Um, so good luck with everything and hope to see you again soon.